Good morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is stop resisting. <laughs> um, we, we create so much friction for ourselves in life when we resist the way that things are going. And when we allow ourselves to stop resisting and just flow with life in the direction that it's flowing, we can have a richer experience of life happening for us and through us rather than to us. So it should be a fun conversation. But before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, and creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub your hands together and feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure. And when you stop rubbing them together, the tickling and tingling, allow all those sensations to bring you present to this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life right here, right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning to everybody else who's joining us. Wonderful to be here with you this Friday. And um, the weeks just keep flying by. It's amazing to me how quickly time, time passes. Um, so today we're talking about stop resisting. And this comes from something that happened yesterday, which was, it was so remarkable. Um, it, I, I, I don't know if you've had the experience where you see yourself in the midst of a pattern and you stop and you're able to shift that pattern and everything changes. So that's what happened yesterday. It was remarkable. So um, I, I uh, found myself, I, I was helping somebody to do something and I had um, been clear that I had an appointment that I had to make. And um, we ended up running over time. And I knew that I was going to be late for my appointment. And what happened was in my mind, I, I was going, starting to go down this road of, um, you know, sort of blaming this other person because, you know, I I had been explicit about this appointment and and I, I saw myself getting into this whole story and I stopped myself from doing that. And then, then um, I saw I was going to be late for the appointment and I, I, uh, might just make it. And I started, um, I had to drive home and I started, you know, doing the aggressive driving thing, rushing and, and all of that. And, and I saw myself doing that and I stopped that and said, okay, I'm just going to allow that everything's going to be fine. It's just going to be fine. And um, it, in fact, it's going to be better than fine. And then I realized that I had miscalculated that, in fact, my appointment was sooner than I had remembered it. And so not only had 
had the circumstances with this other person contributed to potentially making me late, but I made me late by misremembering the time for the appointment and had a moment's panic around that and then just let it be. And I called the person that I had the appointment with. And as it turned out, it was better for them to reschedule the appointment because it turned out that they had a deadline that our appointment was going to um what was going to put in jeopardy they needed to meet a deadline and it was much more convenient for them to not have the appointment at our scheduled time or even later and so it worked out and <laughs> i know this um this is really convoluted so i apologize for that but um i also had another event scheduled after the appointment that i was missing so i called about that and we were able to reschedule that for earlier which worked out better for both of both of us so it was fascinating to me that when I was able to let go and just allow that it was all going to work out and that life is happening for me and through me rather than to me, um, what happened was the appointment that I had was better rescheduled for both of us. The event that I had afterwards was better rescheduled for both of us. And the person that I was helping got the help they needed. And um, even though it took longer than anticipated, and so everybody got what they needed. And it was remarkable. It was remarkable. And um, it was also quite remarkable to be in that situation where I saw myself starting to spin out and catch myself and just fall back into trusting and relaxing and not resisting and allowing life to unfold. And um, it, it, was, it was awesome because it was such a um, vivid, example you know it was it, it, there were multiple points where i could see myself getting into a tizzy and i just was able to stop and come back come back to a place of of center of trust of allowing life to unfold and it unfolded in such a way that the that the result was better than what had been planned, you know, and and it way better than what had been planned. So I I wonder how many opportunities we have for that kind of thing in life if we can allow ourselves to stop resisting and relax into the flow to um to just let life unfold and trust that it's to our advantage um i know that when when things are going poorly it's a challenge to let things unfold to our advantage um but in this situation what I what I noticed was there was the interpretation that life was going poorly and I was allowing myself to get stressed out about it. And then when I shifted my perspective on it, my behavior shifted, my physiology shifted. I wasn't anxious anymore. I just sort of just chilled out and let it be. And um and it turned out to be better better than it could have been and 
I, um, I also, had I stayed in that stressed out place, I might have been um, driving in a way that could have caused danger to me and other people, you know, with the rushing or, or at least even the anxiety around it. And um, instead, it turned out to be just remarkable and and easy and delightful. So I'm wondering where where have you have you had the opportunity to see yourself getting into a a um, state around something that was clearly not serving you or anyone else and be were, be able to stop yourself and course correct so um when when we stop resisting when we allow that there may be things at work that we wouldn't have anticipated or conceived of, then um, it shifts the whole context. It shifts the whole experience on a whole bunch of different levels. Now, I don't know. I, it's almost like we have choices, and I do believe we do, that that there are forking paths. There was a wonderful story uh, by Georges uh, Louis Borges called The Garden of Forking Paths, where um, there were these different choice points and different outcomes occurred based on those choices. And I, I wonder if you've ever seen yourself like in in the midst of that garden and noticed when the paths had the opportunity to fork that's really what happened yesterday it was so vivid it was so fascinating to be able to be present to those choices in in a very vivid way you know to see oh here i'm behaving this way i'm reacting this way and it's taking me down this path and i can choose i'm present to that awareness in this moment and therefore it offers me the opportunity to choose and i choose to go this way instead and um, perhaps rather than stop resisting, today's topic should have been more on the lines of choose, you know, wake up and choose. So, or choose to your benefit, um, you know, choose life, choose life, allowing, choose to allow life to serve us. So when we resist the way that life is going, you know, it, I was fighting against it. I was feeling anxious. I was, um, I had a minute maybe of starting to drive aggressively, which endangers me and everybody else on the road. Um, and then to choose differently. And the thing is that we are confronted or we are given the opportunity to make these kinds of choices all the time where life isn't going the way we think it should. Circumstances aren't unfolding the way we wanted them to or thought they should be unfolding. And therefore we fight against it or, or, or try to overpower it or try to correct it. And instead of just allowing ourselves to flow with it. It's such a very different experience of life. And 
we can create such misery for ourselves when things don't happen the way we think they should, you know? Um, so Rosalind says, rather than feeling hurt from others not supporting you, one can commit to your own growth. Let grow, go of trying to be all. Um, trying to be maybe all things to all people. I'm not sure, but um, I'm not sure if that's what you're trying to say. But uh, when others are, are not supporting you, uh, oh, there you go. Rosalind says you can't be all things to everyone. Absolutely. And, and so uh, when we talk about hurt, for others not supporting you, for instance, um, we can make it about them not supporting us. We can make it about us not being worthy of their support. What's wrong with me that they're not supporting me? Or what's wrong with them? I give so much to them and they're not giving back to me. Um, we can just recognize that other people have their own stuff and it's not necessarily about us at all um you know we make stories up about everything we make meaning we we try and we do that in the course of trying to understand or trying to have the world be something that we can control and the beauty of life unfolds when we allow ourselves to be in the not knowing when when we don't have to make up reasons for everything you know we don't have to when when we're allowing ourselves the space to just let things be without having to ascribe some kind of intention or greater meaning or greater lesson and if we curate those stories carefully we can make lessons and make meaning that actually serves us and forwards us like you know i'm not uh, the the life is happening for me and through me rather than to me that's a story it may or may not be true but it serves me it serves me in creating a relationship with life that gives me greater ease and grace. I'm not saying it's true necessarily, but if I if I operate from that space, it it provides experience for me that is enriching and and that provides me with much greater comfort and um ease in my life versus the world is a dangerous place and everybody's out to get me you know if i'm operating under that story it's not going to provide me with the same uh comfort and and joy and experience is it and it's not it's not so much about what's true as it is about what we make be true and and believing that we deserve a quality of life that we deserve to enjoy life and that that's very much an internal gain game it's not as much about the externalities as it is about our internal experience. So the, the um, quality of life that I'm talking about is delivering that quality of life to ourselves through the stories that we create about it. And so, for instance, if we believe that our life is a journey of learning and awakening, then 
that can help us to contextualize some of the really challenging experiences that we have in life. You know, is to say, well, what, how can I, how can I integrate this experience in a way that it will enrich me? Um, I think I've shared with you that when I, being something of a klutz, <laughs> now there's a story, right? So that, because I think that maybe I perpetuate that. Um, but if I, if I trip, if I don't fall to the ground, I just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Cause I could have tripped and broken my head, but I didn't. So um, then I'm grateful instead of feeling like you know, I shouldn't have tripped in the first place. It's like I tripped, but I didn't get hurt. That's a blessing. You know, we can find blessings everywhere. Um, so when we when we resist the way things are, what happens is that we compound the difficulty. Um, and when we allow ourselves to flow with life as it unfolds, we create a greater ease for ourselves. Even if the circumstance isn't that great, we can transform it into being, being great. You know, it's like if we give ourselves a chance to um, be where we are, instead of wanting to be somewhere else, there's all kinds of treasures available to us in that moment. And um, I think that that's really what, what this conversation goes to, is that when we allow ourselves to be truly present in the moment, instead of trying to make that moment something else, that we have a chance then to notice the uh, the treasures of it. You know, when we're when we're busy trying to get something done, it's kind of fighting against time to just do 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 get it all done, instead of being able to be in the moment in the doing in you know present to it and in the presence to it there's the richness of the actual experience instead of the denial of the experience trying to get someplace else so um when when we're rushing to go get something done oftentimes the the rushing itself prolongs the agony of something you know the 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 rushing creates all this tension and all this anxiety and when we relax into it the likelihood is that we'll be more efficient probably anyway when we allow ourselves to be present because when we rush we might be making um, we might make mistakes because um, we're stressed and we might make decisions that aren't optimal because we're so wired up that we're not thinking as clearly, we're not as present. So when we're present, we have greater discernment. And when we're resisting, we're not really being there. You know, we're wanting things to be different. So if I'm wanting things to be different, then I'm not experiencing what is. And so I can't be as responsive to the needs of the moment because I'm, I'm trying to make it be something else. I don't know about you, but I notice when I've rushed all kinds of things go wrong because I'm resisting, you know, whereas if I'm 
present, I can just take care of what is arising as it arises. So, Rosalyn says, perhaps your experience was felt vividly with our eyes closed. 80% of the information, let's see, perhaps your experience was felt vividly with our eyes closed. 80% of the information is absent, the dominant sense of sight, except you were present even with your eyes open. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Well, you know, it's it's really interesting when we are able to cultivate the witness. I'm going to, you know, to to be able to see ourselves in our circumstance. And I was able to see, oh, my gosh, look at what you're doing. You're going to, you know, you're making yourself crazy over something you can't control. So that's the thing is that we often try to buck the way that things are going and things are going that way. There's not a whole lot you can do about it other than to flow with it or resist it. And when you resist it, you make it worse, typically, right? And, and so thank you for that. Yes, I was able to see with my eyes open that I was, I was getting myself worked up into a state and that that was going to be like dominoes, creating all kinds of other things that I didn't want. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the, the invitation for today is to allow yourself to go in the direction that things are going. Don't resist, allow yourself to relax into it. And that's when the opportunities appear because you're present. So you can see, well, it, what's next? What's next? And all this stuff unfolded. And it was just, it was, it was such a profound lesson or such a profound illustration of a lesson that, that I invite you to take it on and, and see how you might be able to experience that greater ease in your own life when you might be working yourself up into a frenzy and choose to be present instead and see what happens um, and let life happen for you and through you rather than to you. So that's it for today and for this week. And I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. Rosslyn says, if you understand why it happened, then the pattern can begin to break down. Exactly. By becoming aware and creating space from the reactiveness. Exactly. Exactly. When you recognize it, then you can start shifting it consciously and deliberately and choose grace. So I invite you all to check out the awesome programming on Enlightened World Network, EWN One with the Earth, Enlightened World Living. And I wish you a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I so appreciate you until next time. Lots and lots and lots of love.